Du har panel, du har kollegs. Ja, sant. Om en kollege, namn Dafne Petrov. During recent 20 years, has been developing anti-tumor vaccines. We didn't know anything about new immunological medications, but we understood that historic experience accumulated until recent times shows that there are groups of patients who, due to several reasons, treatment, immune system, can respond to immune therapy. We have to understand the points that can improve treatment for patients when we exhaust the capacities of standard treatment. And we use recommendations for medication treatment or for neurological patients. And we are a research institute, and our task was to improve the results, understanding which group of patients can respond to immune therapy vaccine therapy. Here you see our recommendations that we use in our center. These are patients on standard treatment, but we see for the progression of the disease. Oh, maintenance therapy is indicated. Conciliums and understanding which patients we can render such assistance have become the focus of attention. So it was shown that tumor is changing its phenotype. There are clones of tumor cells, non-sensitive to standard methods of treatment. But chemotherapy, radiotherapy, transformed phenotype of tumor cells. And there are more new antigens uh, our study was focused on testicular antigens, genes which are not in normal teases, but they are present in tumors. For different clones of cells, different treatment is needed, different instruments that can treat patient or reduce tumor mass. At the same time, there is immune depression as a result of standard treatment in such patients, or as a result of dissemination of tumor on the background of immune depression. Look at lymphoid system, cells of immune system. Our organism can protect itself from infections and tumor process. It's a great army of immune system cells. But our standard methods of treatment and disease weaken the immune system. We need correction, adjustment, so that we would understand that uh, to what extent our vaccines can impact anti-tumor immune response consisting of several components. Each of these signals uh, is associated with immune response. Signal one is tumor cells which are immunogenic, then immature dendrite cells which mature, migrate into lymph nodes, lymphoid tissues. And here we see a clone of uh, tumor-specific lymphocytes which destroy tumor. That's why scientific approach to immune therapy is increasing anti-tumor immune, resp immune response, increasing functional activity of tumor-specific effector cells, mediators of immune response, reduction of suppression mechanism, increasing immunogenicity of tumor-associated antigens, overcoming tolerance to chemo-radiotherapy. Myeloid dendrite cells mature in um, uh, the bone marrow. They migrate as monocytes. And there are a few immature dendrite cells in uh, peripheric blood. So 
our goal that in laboratory conditions we should receive a lot of dendrite cells from monocytes. Dendrite cells can be used in laboratory settings to treat patients when standard treatment is not helpful. Dendrite cell can collect a lot of lymphocyte on its surface. As a result of its unique ability to express uh, molecular of histosomistic uh, compatibility complex. Cancer testicular antigens are expressed only in tumor cells. And it allows, even after several lines of therapeutic treatment, it allows to restore immune response, stimulating activity of lymphoid cells. The technology implies uh, receiving the material, the sample of the tissue, then using the equipment that allow to uh, re to get a great number of antigen, keep them in uh, frost, and then infuse it uh, in case of need to our patients. You, here you see uh, dendritic cells, immature dendritic cells, and uh, on the right you see dendritic cells that are loaded with uh, tumor-associated antigens. And you see how fast these dendritic cells are activated and how quickly they start to move. Nowadays, our clinical experience allows us to treat patients with exhausted capabilities of various localizations. Uh, we've had uh, more than 400 patients with uh, cancer, uh, rectal cancer, breast cancer, kidney cancer, and other types of tumors, osteogen sarcomas, uh, lung cancers, and various localizations. In general, uh, in total, 74 patients. Now, we have the data on uh, all of our patients that uh, we can analyze. We see that the 50% uh, of uh, patients um, had a good response and uh, uh, we see complications uh, of the first and second stage only uh, in in 57 percent of patients and anti-tumor effect we received in uh, more patients uh, we also saw patients that uh, had a long stabilization of uh, the disease a case of uh, melanoma in uh, the back and uh, also, we now we uh, see regress uh, because of vaccine therapy uh, for several months. It's a very good result that uh, can be received in patients with uh, exhausted capabilities of standard methods of uh, treatment. Larynx uh, cancer in this case, and this patient uh, was refused uh, in radiation therapy and chemotherapy because of um, um, risk of heart uh, complications. Uh, he, uh, he was refused in the surgical uh, therapy, but he received uh, radiation therapy, and um, the effect, effect was uh, partial regress. You see the changes in the immunogram before the treatment and after the treatment. And uh, he's now uh, went through the immune therapy and uh, uh, he lived 36 months without uh, any regression. Um, to the left, uh, you see a patient with a good prognosis, uh, melanoma. Uh, to the left, uh, you see a graph uh, that looks kind of uh, like a 
glass. But uh, to the right, you see a craft that uh, resembles a sail. And uh, this is uh, not uh, a favorable uh, prognosis. So uh, further research is needed uh, to see how to change uh, this result. We've done the analysis of longevity of uh, patients with sarcoma of soft tissues who received dendritic cell treatment in comparison to chemotherapy. And on this slide, you see patients who received um, uh, uh, chemotherapy and um, the ones that went through standard, uh, the first and second line of uh, therapy. and you see that the longevity improved. And uh, this is a very important factor of uh, treating our patient in an uh, outpatient uh, setting. Uh, 15 years uh, survival um, period of our patients with a disseminated melanoma uh, who received a modified TEC7 vaccine. Um, these patients, uh, their the longevity was 3.3 uh, months, but uh, with standard treatment. But those who received immunotherapy lived for more than 15 years. I would like to present our possibilities uh, at our center. This is our laboratories, equipment, and the level of specialists. Uh, this all allows to develop new approaches and uh, uh, both uh, in inpatient and outpatient settings. Thank you.